the weekend, Ubisoft had their presentation. They showed us some new stuff, some pre-existing stuff, and gave us a more detailed look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And yes, technically we already got our first look at it during the Xbox presentation from a couple weeks ago, but in all honesty, that kind of sucked. <laughs> they didn't really show a whole lot of gameplay and it was almost an afterthought. Now we got an actual real first look. We got a more detailed look at the world that Valhalla takes place in, the time period, some story details, some gameplay details. But before we take our little Assassin's Creed deep dive, I'd like to introduce you to my Patreon page. If you'd like to help support the channel and allow me to continue creating content like this, you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month by clicking the link in the description or head over to patreon.com forward slash gamerthumbtv. I'd also like to go ahead and give a quick thank you to my current patrons and channel members for their continued support. Assassin's Creed Valhalla sends us back to the past, as these games usually do, this time back to the age of the Vikings, and puts you in the boots of Eivor, a male or female character depending on who you choose, and that's one interesting aspect that I'm curious about, is how the story is going to handle that. In comparison, Odyssey, spoilers by the way if you haven't played Odyssey, you also had the choice between the male Alexios or the female Cassandra. In that game, they were two different characters, and depending on which which one you chose, the role was reversed in the story for the other gender. Well, this time around, Eivor, whether you choose the female or male character, is the same character in the storyline. There's no two characters. And Ubisoft does have some sort of story explanation for this involving some sort of upgrade on the Animus. It's already been revealed that you'll be able to toggle the gender from male to female at any point during the actual game. I'm wondering if the story reason will have something involving missing data in the memories that the Animus is reading or something similar so it's kind of filling in the blanks with information so maybe it wasn't sure if this person from the past was male or female like an incomplete genetic profile or something just my theory it would make sense though it's gonna be real interesting to see how that all comes together story-wise Eivor's goal is to build a Viking settlement in England after leaving his or her home in Norway like real Vikings they were invaders that tried to expand their society by mixing in with the locals and taking over territory of their own and that's present in the gameplay in these massive Massive assaults. Sometimes you'll be in these huge battles, taking your Viking allies into castles and barging through the doors into combat. You'll also be able to sail up and down England's rivers and discover smaller villages that you can stop by and raid casually. The combat's going to be very similar to the likes of Origins and Odyssey, so don't expect the extremely easy block and counter attacked constantly gameplay of old school Assassin's Creed. I'm a big fan of this because Origins introduced a new gameplay style for the series when many players complained that the franchise was getting stale. Odyssey built on that gameplay style and Valhalla is going even further allowing you to dual wield any two combinations of weapons you want, even letting you fight with double shields. And I love how you can cover yourself like a shell and thrust yourself forward just rocketing through enemies. And it's even more brutal with heads flying off from the impact of battle axes. They've never had decapitated heads in combat. Some of the story battles in Valhalla also allow the player to make choices. You beat a boss for example, you could choose to kill that boss or let him live. And and these options do have an effect on the story. One example they showed off, if you let a boss called Ruid live earlier in the game, he'll show up later on to harass you at a wedding. That's really cool because it'll definitely encourage me to do a second playthrough as the other gender and then make different choices just to see how it all shapes the story details. Putting combat and murder aside, the world of Valhalla seems like it's going to be full of stuff to do and I think it'll be an improvement over what Odyssey offered. I loved how full the world of Odyssey was, which is a reason the game takes so long to complete easily 1 to 200 hours if you want to do everything. Something Ubisoft has promised to scale back slightly on, and one improvement I see is the side quests. Odyssey had a lot of interesting side quests that add more detail to the overall story, but let's be real, it also had a ton that were fetch quests, or someone just asking you for money. Very basic side quests. Valhalla doesn't have traditional side quests, they have world events. It's more so going to be side activities that are extensions of whatever main quest you're on, versus simply seeking out quest giver A that sends you to a objective B, C, and D before you have to run all the way back to A and turn in and then it's over. So it won't be that traditional side quest formula, and there's going to be plenty of mini games like getting drunk faster than your opponent, then while the camera is spinning around from the intoxication, you have a bow and arrow contest, and also Viking rap battles, historically known as flighting, where each participant has to insult the other in the most creative manner while rhyming. To all those whom I speak, they say Eivor's a clod. 
Then you're speaking to fools and their knowledge is flawed. Silent whispers all claim that you're terribly dense. Then you've clearly misheard them. My wit is immense. And one of the game's story goals is to build your Viking settlement, building up your community. And you could even recruit new Viking raiders onto your Viking longship. Even a cat Viking raider, which is both ridiculous and awesome at the same time, bringing a cat into battle with you. And the community building aspect reminds me of more in-depth versions of the homestead in Assassin's Creed 3. And that's one thing the series does well consistently, is building upon concepts that they introduced in previous games. Valhalla is definitely pulling some inspiration from previous entries, even going all the way back to the original Assassin's Creed with some of the stealth mechanics. Since Eivor is an invader, certain sections are going to force you to hoodie up and blend in stealthily with the crowd, and you can perform assassinations that way. A good blend of new Assassin's Creed style and old school Assassin's Creed style. And of course, the series is no stranger to mysteries explained by being from the first civilization, an advanced race of humanoid beings that came before us, and that will surely blend with concepts from Norse mythology, weird cults, witches and such. It's going to be a lot of weird stuff in there. As the player, you'll also need to develop some survival skills, kind of like Breath of the Wild style almost. To regenerate health, you need to have resources like fish on you to eat. I'm a huge fan of this because it's going to force the player to play more carefully, more strategically. In Odyssey, especially after unlocking the healing ability, you can really play the game carelessly with a very little strategy. You can typically run into a fight. If it gets too tough, you could run away, heal, come back and finish it. You're not going to be able to do that now, presumably. Or not as easily, I would say. And finally, Valhalla will have its time wasters. If you want to get away for a little while and relax and just take in the age of the Vikings, there's something called building a cairn where you can just pile rocks on top of each other, and they'll stay just the way you leave them, and you can always come back and make something better and larger, whatever you want to do. Ancient Lego blocks, if you will. I'm really excited about Valhalla, and the new gameplay reveal just increased that excitement tenfold. It's coming out November 17th this year on Xbox One, PS4, Stadia, and PC, and also PS5 and Series X, though the release date of those consoles, as of the time making this video, aren't even officially revealed yet. I don't know if it's going to be a launch title on those consoles or coming later, we don't have those details yet. Xbox One version does feature smart delivery that grants you free access to the Series X version when it's available. So Xbox One might be the better version of this to go with. I haven't heard of the PS5 version doing that yet. Leave me your thoughts down below. What's your current opinion on Valhalla and which version will you be picking up? I'll catch you guys later. Since you made it to the end of this video, I assume you enjoyed it, so why don't you go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, links in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon or become a channel member. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.